Welcome to using Moodle Moot for our future builders. My name's Brett McCrory. I am a full-time teacher at TAFE Illawarra in the Trades and Technology Faculty. Our section is based in Wollongong on the south coast of New South Wales. But our institute covers from Wollongong all the way down to Bega on the far south coast. It actually got 15, there are 15 local government institutes. And yes, we love the gong. I'm originally a builder carpenter within Wollongong, but have now dedicated my life to teaching builders and carpenters. Technology has played a big part in the way our teachers, in the way our section teaches, and the skills you need now are a lot different from days before. Now you may ask yourself, what does a 21st century building carpentry teacher look like? Does anyone know? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well, you might think, <laughs> well, you might think, you might think chalk and nail bag, like the old days. No, no, this is what I think they look like. So we need pop goggles for learning videos, wireless headset for distance learning, a laptop and tablet to re refer to our Moodle site, wireless clicker for normal presentations, and a selfie stick because we all are a bit narcissistic. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot, a nail bag hammer and tape measure because we are doing <laughs> I have a YouTube channel and the sole purpose of this channel is for our learning material to be embedded within Moodle. It's an inventive name, the Chippy. <laughs> We've got 21,400 views and 106 sus subscribers, so it's going all right, I suppose. The channel includes our learning material for our carpentry and building courses. So if you're jumping on YouTube now, please subscribe. <laughs> this is our Moodle site. Our students are studying Certificate 4 in Building Studies and pretty much the course assists with them obtaining a builder's licence. We deliver through Brennan Learning, the course is, sorry, utilising Moodle and Adobe Connect over one year. Students attend classes three nights per week for 40 weeks. They can choose to come to the campus or attend the classes via Adobe Connect. The course is delivered one subject at a time with a clear structure and deadlines for assessment task submissions. So we have Monday nights of face-to-face -face or online, so that's optional, okay? And then Tuesday is always online and Thursdays is optional again. And I'll talk about that a bit more. What's the type of students? Okay, typically they're 90% carpenters, either recently completed their trade or just about to. We also have a wide range of other students, such as um, bricklayers, plumbers, structural engineers. Um, we have a, uh, a civil, civil engineer, and she's from Iran, and her, the biggest issue for her is not actually learning about the building content, it's actually English. So we have a broad range. Uh, the computer literacy levels range from high tech, you know, like a lot better than myself, and you know, very, very poor, where they think login means somewhere where you put in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> we have two teachers to 50 students currently completing this course. And you will notice, this is the typical Monday night class with 30 students present. Okay? Now, I said 50, didn't I? Well, we have the other classroom, which are 20 students online. You may not notice, but the class that are present still access everything through the Moodle. So that's the face-to-face -face group are accessing everything through, the, through Adobe Connect. Okay, so we, uh, I save every presentation and put it at the bottom of the topic. So this, everything is in the Moodle. Quizzes, assessments, forums, books, activities and feedback. And I actually love it because I walk to classroom and I don't have to even take a whiteboard marker. I don't take a roll, I, I just do everything online, everything through Adobe Connect. So I just walk in, prepared, hopefully. <laughs> 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 All right, as discussed, we have two teachers to 50 students, so our time management is very valuable and we really try to help the students. 
but some try to pull the wool over our eyes. And thanks to activity reports. For example, one student complained he wasn't getting enough support. We thought that was unusual because we never really came across this guy since enrolment. And you can see why. The evidence is clear. <laughs> he wasn't doing anything. So, you know, doing it hard copy, you're not sure, but with the Moodle, we just go on their activity reports and we just check this guy hasn't done anything. Now, most of our students are great, but all have different needs, and we try and accommodate that. So, if you look at the screen, I want you to tell me which group, this is, this is actually my class, which group prefers online and which prefers face to face? Does anyone know? Or have a guess? Anyone want to have a guess? Top one, top one what? Online. online. No. <laughs> My guys are builders and carpenters. They prefer face to face. Those guys prefer online. Now, now keep in mind, yeah, we got, what have we got at the top? Um, 25 prefer face to face, 5 prefer online. Well, how many students did I say I had before? 50. 50. There you go. So keep in mind, although the numbers look greater to face to face, you can notice that we have actually included the 20, 20 students are online. Does anyone know that little picture, the little Adobe Connect hands up? Yeah, yeah there you go. There's 20 students <coughs> that prefer it online. Okay? So really, it works out, it's actually half and half of our group. Yeah. So we try and accommodate that for both, both groups. So which group prefers Moodle activities rather than hard copy notes? Anyone know? 50-50, you reckon? It's actually, it's actually 49 students. Every one of them prefer it on the Moodle. Just because it's all central for them, they can go there, they can uh, check all their resources, they can check all their work, and then I give them feedback, and even the automated quizzes can give them feedback as well. So there's 49. Who's the one that doesn't like it? Have a guess. You remember that student? <laughs> Remember him? <laughs> Never seen. Never seen. He's the one who doesn't like it, does he? <laughs> All right. Okay. I've been hustling my students for the last couple of months to get as much. I've done about four or five videos. So I've got Andre. He's going to tell you. He's going to give his feedback on what he thinks. We've got Andre Vega, one of our students for the Cert 4. How are you, Andre? Good, thanks. All right. Mate, you've got the Moodle up and up on the screen, haven't you? Yeah. Right, uh, my question for you is, what do you like most about Moodle and online learning? Oh, everything in Moodle is easy to find. It's all central. Easy um, to find, central, yeah. central location, yep. Yep, yeah, it's all easy to access. Yep. Yep. What else? Um, the feedback's really good. The feedback, you like yep. the feedback? So you complete an assessment, you like looking at the feedback on what we have to say? Yeah, it's really helpful if I've done something wrong, I know where to go back and fix it. Yep, and what if you're not in class, you miss a night? Oh, I just find it easy to go on Moodle and then go on our pre-recorded sessions and everything's easy to find. Good legend. Go on now. Thanks, bud. I promise, I promise I didn't make him say that. He said that on his own back. <laughs> All right, so that's the student feedback. I've got uh, my off-sider, Glenn, and this is a Tuesday night. Okay, it's a typical Tuesday night online, and he's going to tell you why he prefers it actually online. Ask A. Glenn, my offsider, quickly, what's the best thing about teaching these guys online and through the Moodle rather than in the class? Look, in the class, I think there's a lot of distractions, conversation, etc., etc. I think online, on Moodle, they're actually totally focused or as close to totally focused as they could possibly be. And I think the questions that they ask show that. You're a bloody legend. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we've both had a good talk about this and we really feel that teaching through Adobe Connect on a Tuesday night is a lot easier because, you know, we're in that computer room and there's all different spots with the computers and the guys sit there and they start talking and mucking up and we're just having a chat. You don't have that at all on Adobe Connect. So they might make a little comment in the chat box, but that's about it. And actually it's easier for us to teach, although the students prefer face-to-face, -face, some of them, it's easier for us to teach. All right. Our student assessments have slightly changed as well, especially with the use of social media. Here's an example of a student doing a WH in 
WHS workplace inspection. And apologies for VVS. Does anyone know VVS? Do you know vertical video syndrome? Does anyone know glove and boots? Glove and boots on YouTube. Okay, when I first started my YouTube channel, Shane Jeffries from Swizzy, my first video was vertical video syndrome. And he looked at me, he's going, man, don't do vertical video syndrome. And then he told me to look on YouTube to glove and boots. So when you're free, check out glove and boots on vertical video syndrome. All right? And you'll understand why. Hi, my name is Jeremy Quinn and I'm a carpenter. Today I would like to address hazard, risk identification and control in the construction industry. It is important to sustain safe practices to assure the safety of staff and whenever there are safe deep breaches, they need to be fixed. I witnessed an unsafe work practice as I entered my workshop one afternoon. Once I identified the hazard, I have to fulfil my duty of care and because of this, stop the work being conducted. We then revised what was done wrong and established how to implement control measures to make this job safe. At first sight, I acknowledge the hazard is the use of machinery. The risk is increased because the dust extraction system is not used. This can lead to respiratory problems. The operator is also not wearing hearing protection and that can lead to hearing loss. As the job continues, I notice that the operator is not using a push stick and this can lead to cuts. The operator is not wearing eye protection either, which could lead to blindness. Implementing some safety control measures can significantly lower the risk level of this job. This includes the use of the dust extractor, a push stick and the appropriate PPE, safety glasses and earmuffs. By implementing these control measures, the risk of injury is much lower and the job can be completed in a safe manner. Actually, I really enjoy doing these type of assignments because the students get really engaged within the workplace and they really do start, you know, pushing harder with the safety aspect for, for you know, that instance. So, like, Two years ago, I, I, I never did those type of assignments, but now they're pretty much in every, every topic, every cluster that we do, even if they do do VVS. <laughs> okay, so what does the future hold for us using Moodle and online delivery? Well, we're looking at um, doing more lecture-based. So, you know, as I said before, in Wollongong, we've just got that area itself, but we're going to try and do the whole institute. So, you know, it'll include... Um, recording the sessions with say even 100 students but then having uh, teachers at Nara, Goulburn, uh, Cooma and they could help with the tutorials okay and then possibly you know I've spoken to a colleague at Randwick where he's actually spoken to myself and to our head teachers about actually buying our Moodle that we've designed and you know I don't know maybe I'm reaching for the stars but I wouldn't mind trying to get uh, students because I've got like students I'm at Wollongong but I've got students at Cronulla so I'm even thinking, well, why can't we have students in Melbourne or, or you know, South Australia or wherever? So, you know, some of the students that like face-to-face, -face, I've still had one student uh, that came and saw me uh, 12 weeks into the course and I said, who are you? <laughs> he said, oh, my name, I even forget his name, it was Simon. He said, he said, I've been doing the course from the start. I said, oh, yeah, okay. So I went back and I checked on it and he was actually just done every activity and he didn't really need my, much, much support. He was a, quite a good student, you know. So... My aim is, you know, to go, to go bigger. So anyone in Melbourne, I've got some brochures, if you want. <laughs> and I'll go and try and sell, sell the product. <laughs> All right, thank you.